everybody, this is Country Geckos. Welcome to my April 2017 reptile room. In this video, I'll be showing you all my reptiles and amphibians and all their awesome setups. So I'm going to start on this shelf right here. This is where I house my gargoyle gecko comet, and this is where I house my tomato frog elmo. So I'm going to start by showing you my red stripe female gargoyle gecko comet. So here she is right here. Really beautiful animal. She's got a great red stripe running down her back. It's almost unbroken all the way. It's just a solid, beautiful red stripe. Sadly, she'll never be able to breed because um, you might be able to tell from her crooked tail right here that she has metabolic bone disease, which is a pretty common thing that um, geckos get. Just a lack of calcium um, is often the indicator of this, or, or the cause of this issue. But I realized with Comet, in Comet's case, she was egg bound. She laid two infertile eggs, and that was the reason she had a, a, lack, a, a calcium deficiency. She was putting all that calcium in towards her eggs, and that caused her to get this disease. And they were infertile, obviously. I don't have a male to breed her with. But um, she's maintaining a good weight. She's in the 50, 52 grams the last time I weighed her. I try to rate my geckos once a month. Um, but she's doing really well. She's a great eater. She just cleaned out her dish last night for her Pangea, so she's doing good. So up next is my uh, tomato frog Elmo, who I keep in this 12 by 12 by 8, 12 by 12 by 18 exoterra terrarium. Um, I'm not going to get him out and hold him because it's really not good for uh, amphibians to be held by humans because um, it's they have really sensitive skin and I've, he's already dug up his hole and I don't want to have to pull him out against his will. So here he is right here. Um, I think he's, what, he's about four years old now? I believe four or five years old, and they're only supposed to live to three to five years, so he's getting up in his age right now, but he's still a really consistent eater. He does really good. Um, he's a really pretty animal. Might snap at me and put my finger right there. No, but he's an aggressive eater. He loves crickets. That's pretty primarily what I give him. He wasn't a big uh, mealworm fan. And he also didn't like fish or um, earthworms. So basically, waxworms and crickets are all he eats. So um, I give y'all a view of his terrarium. I just now set up. Um, got some moss, just cut as floor cover all around. Got some uh, magnolia leaves, philodendron, spider plant that provides some shade and cover. Water dish, cork flat with a cave. That's where he's in right now. Pretty, pretty nifty setup, and I like it. So right here is my female crested gecko, Frida, who's might be taking a leap of faith. Yep, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, I've got her in this 12 by 12 by 20 glass, custom made glass terrarium. And she's going to escape down in there. I'll probably, I'll get her in just a second. I'll, get, I'll show you guys the terrarium. But here it is right here. I've got uh, some snake plants. Uh, Sands of Eras is the more uh, accurate name. Pothos, Ivy. It's got a clay background that looks super nice. And... It's a lot of grip, so she can climb up around it, and it's pretty nice. Stays really humid in here. Um, Got to hide back here, but she really, honestly, just like she, she kind of sits right here occasionally, and she also gets in between these big snake plant leaves and chills out. And uh, got her food dish up here on this ledge. Bamboo right back there. She doesn't use that too often either. Um, I'm gonna show you guys from the front view. So. Pretty nice terrarium. I want to grab her and get her out. She's an extreme harlequin or a harlequin crested gecko. Let's try to scoop her out gently. Come on out. She's probably my sweetest gecko. She very rarely jumps away from me, and she he's the kind of gecko that I'd hand to a strange or a stranger, or, and wouldn't be afraid that they'd mishandle her. Or she tried to bite or jump away from him. Just a super sweet, docile animal. Really beautiful too. Right here, everybody, is my beautiful Rachidactyl Slechianus gecko, Titan. He is a Pine Island locale with Lechianus. I've got him in this 18 by 18 by 24 exoterratorium that's pretty, pretty awesome looking, really naturalistic. I've got several different types of plants in there. I've got a clay background in the back, nice ledge for him to eat off of. Um, surprisingly, he doesn't weigh that down, it doesn't fall. He is a pretty massive gecko. 
I can't remember the, how much he weighed the last time I went, but I think he's like 210 grams. He's a, already getting huge. He's got about 100 grams left to go, 100 or more le grams left to go. He's a pretty feisty gecko. Um, he'll calm down if I give him like crickets to eat, but otherwise he's kind of he's pretty cage aggressive. That's something pretty normal for male Lichianus to be cage aggressive, but um, I just kind of have to accept that. Try to give you a good view of his cage. So, um, I have a dedicated video just to show you his cage. It's uh, called Amazing Lichianus Vivarium. You guys should definitely go check out that video. So, I'll show you everything. And here he is right here. He's a really beautiful animal. I do plan on breeding him in the future because I really like his coloration. He's got some really nice pinks on him. Really beautiful animal. And he does really, he thrives in this setup without a doubt. Get a focus. You might be able to hear him barking at me. <laughs> there, he's very, very vocal. All right, guys. So that pretty much um, sums up my Lichianus gecko. Right here, guys, is my African fat toe gecko Mocha, who's trying to back uh, side wind out of my hand right now and jump onto the floor which isn't a good idea. Um, so here she is right here. Um, she is a striped morph. Um, trying to get a better focus on her. Let's see if I can get to focus up on her. She's a really docile, uh, tame lizard. She's super nice. Um, similar to Frito's temperament, just super kind and um, won't really jump out of your hand. Never has really tried to bite me. Except when she was really little, she was pretty uh, nippy, um, super awesome little lizard, really cute and pretty, that's a good look at her, um, set her back in her cage right here, for some reason in this setup, she's been much more willing to come out of her main hide that she's retreating back into right now, ironically, but she's been much more willing to come out and, uh, check, uh, check me out while I'm working around in my room and doing stuff in my room, she comes out and looks at me. Just, I guess she feels more confident in this new setup because I've changed a couple things around. Or it's just kind of weird. But she'll come out and she'll be waiting for me to feed her, and that's pretty cool to see because she used to be um, hidden almost all the time, <laughs> but now she's uh, not afraid to come out. So that's good. She's down in there now. And this is her setup right here. I got a ficus, a pothos, a lot of moss, some grass that's dying because she's trampled it. The grass really isn't that good for uh, larger animals. So, um, yeah, that's Mocha. So up next, guys, is my Leopard Gecko Phoenix. Um, he's a really, really great Leopard Gecko. He's a great eater. He's pretty tame. He can be a little flighty at times, but overall, he's a pretty nice little animal. Um, he's, um, I think the last time I weighed him, 92 grams, so he's kind of a beast. Um, he's, he's kind of squirming around. Um... <clears throat> Let's see. So I'll give you a show of his colors. Um, he's not any special morph or anything, but he's just a really pretty spe specimen of uh, just a normal uh, leopard gecko. Probably my favorite leopard gecko morphs. I'm not very good on the names, but I do like the ones that are orange. I think those are called tangerines and sunglows. But I'm, um, I'm happy with how Phoenix looks. He's a really pretty gecko, really beautiful yellow colors. And just a good pet overall. He's my first pet. Um, so, let's see. I'm going to set him back in his cage and I'll give you a look of his cage real quick. Alright, so um, got him in this. I don't know the dimensions, I apologize. But um, it's just a, it's a wide and long uh, exoterra tank. It's much more wide and long than it is tall. So um, that's really good for a terrestrial animal like this leopard gecko right here. And he's going to retreat into his tube and I won't be able to see him and probably until tomorrow when I feed him. <laughs> but um, he uh, seems to be digging this setup super well. He's been eating well in there. I've got the warm hide over to this side right here and then the cool hide. And I've got moss uh, littered throughout here and there um, to pr provide humidity if he, uh, when he's shedding. So yeah, that's my leopard gecko. And finally, everybody, I have my Firebelly Toad, my solo Firebelly Toad bump. 
who I literally, probably about an hour ago, just got done filming a video for on how to set up his cage. I'm not sure if I'm going to release this video or that video first, but um, be on the lookout for that one on my channel. Um, I've got him in this little 8x8x12 uh, exoterra terrarium that he has been eating really well in and seems to, you know, maintain him healthy. And I've got a big water dish in there for him. Um, pretty nice setup. Got a drainage layer, so it's a pretty good uh, setup for him. He eats well in there. He's not a very big animal, which they all really aren't supposed to be that big. But he's a super nice pet. Um, fun to have, fun to watch walk around because they're pretty active during the day. And really, really funny to watch eat. Um, so, yeah. To conclude this video, I thought I'd show you guys um, my new organizational setup for all my substrate and supplies that I use often. Uh, I had this toy rack that had a lot of toys in it when I was little. And I just cleaned out the toys and brought this up here, wiped out all the containers and set some substrates in it. I set it in a different room because there's not enough room in my room. And I just put all the substrates that I have left and it'll be easy to get to them. And um, uh, just looks nice and easy to organize. Organization is so important. <laughs> sand and shells right there. Organization is so important when you have animals. If you uh, keep it in a place where it's easy to get to, um, you'll be much more likely to clean cages and want to take care of your animals. But if it's a big huge mess, you're going you're gonna to be more hesitant to uh, get to cleaning cages and touching up things. So I decided I'd organize this out to prompt myself into working a little bit harder with my animals. So I've just got all this substrate, and I really recommend people who are really into animals to do something like this. Just keep all your things organized. It's just a super important thing to do. It, you can apply that to all walks of life. Organization is really important. Well, everybody, that pretty much concludes my April reptile room video. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Um, I really enjoyed making it. I love showing all you guys my... Uh, pretty fun uh, natural setups you guys seem to approve of them and I really like them and I love making videos for you guys to watch so make sure to like comment subscribe turn on post notifications and I will see y'all in the next one this is Granger Echoes bye